fun thing that I have to say is that uh, you have to be dedicated, very dedicated into the craft and then into the art of doing a character. And you must live and be that person. And so that's the only thing I can sit there and describe. And, so, and, and that and doing top fives with Don Sill, that's the only thing I really know. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Top Fives with Don Sill. I'm your host, Don Sill, and we got another great top five in store for you today. It's a top five character comedians. You know, comedians who take the stage as a character, and that's what makes them character comedians. Joining me today is quite a character himself, is Jeff Bosey, a.k.a. Professor Fedora. I do have a yearning to go ahead and put on some leader holes and then put on the display for all of you. And as always, folks, please remember to subscribe, like, and comment below. We want to know your top five character comedians are as well. But without further ado, let's get right into this. It's me and Jeff Bosey with the top five character comedians of all time. Is it Jeff Bosey or is it Professor Fedora? I'm so confused. Jeff Bosey? Jeff Bosey, how you doing, pal? I'm doing great, Don. How you been? Good, good, man. It's great to see you and have you on top fives with me. This is pretty cool. Oh, it's been a it's it's been a time waiting uh, because uh, <laughs> not only am I a fan of top fives, but you know, hey, there's a little history with me and top fives. What's number two? They're very, very getting hard on the Aunt Shemima. What about her poor, poor husband, Uncle Ben? Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben, over here, Uncle Ben. Yeah, there you go. You used to do uh, this. Is, you used to do top fives for uh, for Pasusu for our show um, that, that we had, and they were always great. And, and uh, that that leads us to the theme of this show. The top fives is the top five uh, comedians who are character comedians. So so comedians who take the stage as a character persona, um, and you've done your fair share of characters. You were Professor Fedora, yes. who's uh, a great character and um, did a great job. And, uh, and, oh, and yes, we... keep going, Don Sill. I love it. It's very yeah. good. Once I like it so much, it gets me tickled in my no-nos. <laughs> and have you ever taken that, that Professor Fedora character to the stage? Oh, absolutely not. Do you know how many comedians, com comedians, committed people, uh, that's why they do characters. Uh, how many of them would go ahead and like just knock on me all day long? I I was thinking about it, but I was like, it's not it's it's not ready for me in my uh, in my stage presence right now. What I told you, Sergio, I don't want your sauce, sir. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and find other places where there couldn't be no sign of Corona. Oh. I think when you're on the come up, like you are, you know, you, you're paying your dues. You're in that dues time where you're out there you know playing all the bars and open mics and and uh at every stage you can there is it is a bigger risk to be a character it's a bigger risk to 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 even like for you you were doing stand-up for a while um with no hat then you started wearing the fedora and they were making fun of you for that so whenever yes. you make a change or try to do anything different they're going to get on you. And, and there is another comedian that's in our Long Island circle of friends who does a character, and he gets a lot of shit for it, too. And yes. that would be Andy Pulajanos, who plays uh, Dracula on stage. Flew all the way from Transylvania. And boy, are my bat wings tired. Ah, you get it? Because I turn into a fucking bat. And I'm a big fan of Dracula. I'm a proponent for it. I, I'm the one who, who kind of pushes him to do more of that. And then I see him around the other comics and they yes. give him a lot of hell for it. They, they goof on him about it. He doesn't suck. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I, th I think it's weird because I think it takes it takes courage in a way, especially in the beginning to to play a character and to get out of your your zone of, of who you are. But I also think that once you do play a character, there's a freedom to that because uh, you could say things that you can't say like you could probably say things get away with saying things as professor fedora that you couldn't say as jeff bosey once i've gone ahead and i noticed there's lots of corona still all over this place here was ni hao to you too no i had that this morning for breakfast what's anything once I don't know what you're talking about, like you go ahead and you turn on an oven and somebody burns. Ah! No, 
that's that's wrong. Um, yeah, you know, I always find that um, I, I believe that when you, you do a character, you can hide. You can definitely hide behind the character, but at the same time, you um, it could be just hiding yourself at the same token. You know, you don't want the real you out there. You know, so maybe it's a you know some kind of psychotic psychosis weird kind of thing that they do. <laughs> I think that's true, and I also do think that just like a lot of different forms of comedy, whether it's you know a musical act or ventriloquist or props, it's, it's sometimes being a character can be looked looked down on. But if you look at some of the the, the character comedians that have done it right, mm -hmm. they're icons. They're yes. a, they're they're absolute icons. And it's because they didn't play by the rules and they, they ignored all the people that wanted to goof on them. Uh, I'm sure every single one of the, these people we're about to mention were goofed on for being in a character for, for, for on stage um, and not being themselves or just the, the, just making fun of the character, whatever it is. There's always going to be people out there and, and that's what takes um, some gutspa and some balls is to go despite those people you continue on with the path as long as you feel that it's worth it run away train never going back wrong way on a one-way track it seems like i should be getting somewhere somehow i'm neither here nor there but if you think about it that person or persons would only be remembered as that character, nothing else in their life. You know, they they they, they actually um, an example of uh, one of uh, of one of my picks would be a prime example of how that one person uh, wasn't taken seriously. Uh, but you might know who it is. Well, we'll we'll get into that. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> I, I do want to say that um, that this is one of those fine line type of lists because uh, there's an argument where people could say that every comedian is a character on stage. Everybody embodies a, a different persona when they get on stage, but this is not that. This is character comedians who are a full-on character, a yes. whole different person on stage than they are off stage. And it's it's not an impression. It's not somebody who does impressions. And it's, right. it, you know, and um, like a famous one character that I, when I was crafting this list i was thinking about richard pryor he played this character mudbone on stage he get into the old oh, mudbone and he's like this alcoholic drinking guy almost like a homeless guy right. telling stories now i know that boy see he fucked up see that fire got on his ass and it fucked him up upstairs but to me that's he's already Richard Pryor and then he gets into a character. Correct. Right? So he's not up on stage. It's not like, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mudbone. It's not exactly. That. So f for this list, I wanted to keep it that, like actual kind of character, yeah. character comedians, people that embody the character, the whole different name and that they answer to and everything. Please don't interrupt, folks. These, these jokes were choreographed very carefully. <laughs> For maximum impact by the late great Rudolf Nureyev, the Russian ballerina. And there's quite a few of them, again, um, but not that many. So we, we're probably going to get a lot of the same ones. So for every one that we get that's the same, automatically yeah. gets pushed into the top five. Wow, that's that's into the into our final it. top five. It's yeah, like, it's like since so it's like they automatically get dumped into this pile of uh, of, of 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 the end. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like napkin children. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get right into this, man. It's time to get into the top five. Uh, Jeff Bosey, uh, top five character comedians. Who's your number five pick? Ooh, my number five. Actually, it's weird. And most people would consider him, like, you know, to be number one. My number five is Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> Excellent. I love Andrew Dice Clay. Um, tell me a little bit about Dice. Well, uh, he was actually uh, originally, uh, his real name is Andrew Silverstein. But uh, pretty much he uh, he started out in the uh, 
early late seventies and early eighties. And um, he was also, um, I guess it was Ronnie Dangerfield uh, who went ahead and uh, pretty much introduced him. And uh, he, he took on the, you know, the, the bad tough guy Italian. Hey, how you doing? You know, and uh, but he he just rock and rolls with that, and it's it's actually become part. He's he's done it so long that it's it. There's I don't think there's any turning back on how he could like revert to who he possibly was before he turned <laughs> into Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> The early Dice, uh, used, he used to be an impressionist. He was a young guy. He started at Pips in Brooklyn, um, and he would go and do impressions. And one of his favorite impressions was John Travolta, because at the time he kind of yes. looked like John Travolta. They both had the curly uh, hair. To lay off the skull, I, I, I work a long time on my head and, and you rattle my brains. I get confused, you know what I mean? It's my head. Don't touch my hair. I put a lot of work into it. And he did Stallone and he did all these impressions. Right. And, um, you know, he was just an average comedian trying to be an actor. He was in, he was actually in a movie early on before his dice persona really kicked in. But then one day he, he just realized he started getting a better reaction from the crowd at Pips when he would be this dice character. So he started adding more and more and more to dice. I know what you're saying. This guy's got an attitude. <laughs> I can't help it. It's where I come from. Jail. <laughs> Everybody back there's got an attitude. It's like the second I was born, doctor smacks me in the behind. I looked at him, I said, doc, problem. <laughs> and then finally Dice engulfed everything he is. And then, like you said, on that Rodney Dangerfield young comedian special, um, that, that's, that's when Dice Man had cometh. <laughs> that's when he arrived and um he came during the era during full-blown like full-blown aids yeah but, uh, <laughs> well miss muffet sat on a tougher eating occurred some way long came a spidey sat down beside he said hey what's in the bowl bitch oh dude he, he was so huge in the 80s and 90s he was selling out arenas and all that stuff he he his he was like a, a misogynist times 100 you know his yeah. whole act he was very misogynistic um racist he, he just said some stuff now when if you go back and watch his his early specials you'll cringe out in la manhattan you got them all over the place brooklyn we don't have any gay people <laughs> they're all dead <laughs> All we got is a big sign that says, welcome to Brooklyn, fourth largest city in America with this dead fag hanging off the pole. Because of some of the things he says about other races and <laughs> things like that, oh, he, he says they're not even human. He, he, the things that he was saying back in the 80s and early 90s, um, like, it, like once again, any comedian uh, or famous comedian from back then, you might as well just go ahead, find yourself a cross, and nail yourself in. <laughs> at which point, you know, and say like, "Oh no, just stone me. I'm good." I know because like <laughs> the horrible, mean things that hurt your widow, widow feelings. <laughs> One of the things I always said about Dice Clay versus Sam Kinison is Sam Kinison was the real thing. Yes. Sam Kinison lived it. He was real. Dice pro probably never drank that hard, never did that much drugs, never yeah. partied like that, because uh, Dice was a character. Uh, good old uh, Andy Silverstein, you know, just went back home and probably took a nap or something, where, uh, you know, Kinnison's out there doing, doing the, <laughs> the real damage. But in any case, Andrew Dice Clay is an icon, um, and I still think one of the greats and, and kind of an important figure in stand up in a way um, for showing that it can be done to that level. I'm glad you people listened and take some advice. You could do anything you want. Take it from Dice. 
always knew I'd make it. I never had a doubt. Life's like sex, baby. The more you put in, oh, the more you get out. <laughs> Off topic and a little trivia. Did you know what Sam Kennison did before he got into comedy? He was a preacher. Yeah. Weird, huh? Praising the Lord and then going ahead and screaming about, like, you know, dropping a load on your face the ver the, the other night. I, I, <laughs> and I know you see these porno movies and the girl's like, oh, yeah, let me, let me, uh, oh, yeah, something, uh, no. Yeah, that's in the movies. That's in the movies. In real life, it's, oh! He was an animal. Love him. All right, so that's a great number five. I also picked Andrew Dice Clay. He's he. Uh, I'll, I'll mention him later on as we get to the list. He's a little higher up for me, but um, my number five uh, is a comedian who is always in different characters. Uh, he's Long Island's own Bob Nelson. Mm, Bob so, Nelson, yes. Bob Nelson. He did a variety of characters. Uh, whether it's Epi Epperman or Jiffy Jeff or these football players or uh, whoever, um, right. he very rarely, if ever, took the stage as himself. Uh, I don't recall him ever really being Bob Nelson. Um, you know, whether he's juggling the scarves, he's always yeah. in some kind of a character. He's Epi normally when he's doing that, or if he's, um, you know, Jiffy Jeff. Jiffy Jeff. So he, he's always performing in some kind of character. All of his characters are iconic and great. He had that one great HBO special. Uh, Nelson Schmelson, where he's running in and out of that house, and it, as all the different characters, I don't know how he pulled that off with all the costume changes. And but um, he was the monkey. I, I listen. Am I on? Am I on camera? Uh, hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Jiffy Jeff's gym. Uh, my, uh, my name, my name is Jeff. Sorry. And by the way, uh, ever since that character that he created, uh, I've hated my first name ever since. <laughs> Jiffy Jeff, Jeff, Jeff what, 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 what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What? You know, and it was, I was just like, wow, my first name is uh, equivalent, equivalent to a, uh, a, a, a football moron. And I, I have to like, hey, Jiffy Jeff. And then people use it as a nickname. I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Bob Nelson's great. I love Bob Nelson. Bob Nelson's also an icon and a legend, and uh, he's been going through a rough patch right now, but I feel like he's he's recovering nicely, I hope, knock on wood. And, uh, you know, so give a lot of props to Long Island Zone, Bob Nelson, one of my all-time favorite uh, comedians. Um, he's great. All right, so let's go, move on to your number four pick. Ooh, my number four. Okay, um... My number four is um, Andy Kaufman. Ah, great pick. Um, I mean, the fact that uh, he's pretty much, he started out, uh, I believe, uh, on Taxi. And uh, he had a character, he's like uh, from some weird country, I don't know. But for some reason, he had to talk like this every time. <laughs> I don't know any the ippy tapa lapa chili pata poko lapa chili pata pata. But you know he went ahead and uh, he wasn't taken seriously when he tried to. I mean, even though he, I, I feel that he's like the biggest uh, prankster. I mean, like who knows? He could still be alive. <laughs> Some know. people thought he was. So there was actually people who thought he was going to reveal himself in the year two thousand hit. Uh, so like twenty one years ago, people thought. That was when he was going to say, hey, but 20, the year 2000 came and went and no Andy. Yeah, we were still worrying about if we needed to go ahead and shut our computers off just in case. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of Y2K. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like just like that and Andy both didn't happen. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now andy kaufman is great he he was he was doing stand-up 
before Taxi, and he did the Latka character back then. Um, it was the foreign man, Latka. Uh, basically, what I loved about it was that he fooled the whole audience. He came out, hello, everybody, how are you? And he would do impressions. Here is my impression of Archie Bunker. Edith, you're so bad, Edith. Why don't you get out of the out of the living room? Go to the kitchen, Edith. So first, I would like to imitate Archie Bunker. You stupid! Everybody so stupid! You, you meathead! Get out of my chair! You ding back! Go in the kitchen! Make me the food! Everybody so stupid! I don't like nobody so stupid! Thank you very much. <laughs> then he would do all these impressions similar to that. Then finally he goes, and here is my Elvis Presley. And then he would do this amazing dead-on real Elvis. And he was one of the first people to impersonate Elvis, believe right. it or not. Uh, especially on on the comedy stage, really? because it was, it was before Elvis was had passed away and all that stuff, and he, Elvis was still alive, and he was doing his Elvis impression. And then when he was done, he'd be like, "Thank you very much." You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, I think Andy was a genius, and he also did Tony Clifton, another yes. iconic character. Uh, I mean, so, really, like that whole thing, like yeah, go go screw yourself. Yeah. But, uh, it was like his, he did, like, he had alter egos that were alter egos of alter egos. I didn't ask you a question. If I ask you a question, you answer. All right, for you two. You don't tell me. Anyway, it was very cold out of a back east. I mean, that's why you didn't know where, where he was going to be at that, uh, that juncture of the day, let alone his career well david letterman always said he goes whenever i spoke to andy and i looked into his eyes i could see that the lights were on but nobody's home <laughs> <laughs> and i always thought that's such a great quote and really embodies andy kaufman because you never know even if he's being sincere you're still kind of on your toes and you don't know if, if andy's really being sincere if he's setting you up for something yeah uh you know but uh but yeah andy kaufman um he, he was on my top 10 for sure uh, Long Island guy, another one. Two, it's two Long Islands in a row, <laughs> and uh, he was just uh, two Long Islands in a Brooklyn. Let's not forget. Where... Listen, don't worry. I'll be moving out of the states soon enough. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I got you covered, buddy. <laughs> well, my my number four, and this might be one of the guys you're talking about. I, I don't know, um, but this guy. A lot of people love him and a lot of people hate him. And some people are just confused of how this guy made it so famous. Um, and it's it's one of the uh, the blue collar comics himself, Larry the Cable Guy. So Larry the Cable Guy, his real name is Daniel Lawrence Whitney. And uh, he's from Nebraska. He grew up on a pig farm and all that stuff. And, and uh, he did but straight... Course. He did, he did straight stand up with his real name for years. And right. he was actually like thinner and, you know, pretty decent looking guy. And, and he was he'd go out there in the 80s, boom, wearing the jacket. And hey, everybody, how you doing? Didn't really have an accent. But then uh, he hit pay dirt with this character. And uh, Larry the Cable Guy, get her done. And uh, became part of the blue collar of comedy guys. And with, uh, just with launched Jeff Foxworthy, and all Jeff of them. Foxworthy Dave uh, Envol. Or I think it's Dave and yeah, Bill. Yeah, Dave and yeah. Bill. Yeah. And then uh, Ron White. But Larry was the breakout star from that group. I got my little brother was over at the house the other day. I ain't never told you about him. He was born deaf. His whole life he'd been deaf. But he's real good with the sign language. And, uh, but he's got Tourette's too, so he's kind of like that. You know? And... Uh, he, he also just rose to superstardom with that persona, another icon. Uh, and, and that just shows you. And, and it, it, you know, taking it back, I wonder if when good old Dave Lawrence Whitney decided to change his name to Larry the Cable Guy, what his friends may have thought or what his friends may have said or if they gave him a hard time. And now look at him. Uh, you know, the guy has become an icon and uh, has traveled, you know, the world and extremely successful. He's a millionaire. And, and, Look, if you ever break down his comedy and watch one of his specials, he's funny. I was uh, I was going to get married one time. I, you know, it, it's hard finding the right person. I was living with a girl for about eight months until she found out I was there. And uh, hey, it worked pretty good. 
He's yeah. funny. So, uh, but I mean, I'm pretty sure his friends are going like, "Wow, that's so dumb. Can I borrow a couple of thousand? I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, honestly, he he definitely he definitely made it by being that character. Oh yeah, for so, sure. I mean, it, it's 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 truly amazing on how. But once again, that is where um, you're able to go ahead and say, "All right, you didn't like uh, some people. They start out their career being a character, and right. it went from like, wow, I'm like garbage right now, being me." But let's see what happens when I'm somebody else. And then that's where it it's that yep. one thing, that one thing you got to do, and then you're on fire. My brother just celebrated the second and get her done. My, uh... <laughs> All right, so let's, who's your, uh, your number four? Oh, uh, your number my, three. Your number my number three. three. Okay, my number three is Rowan Atkinson. Oh, yeah, very yes, good. We, we went, we flew over the ocean to go get that guy. <laughs> very yeah. good pick. Tell me a little bit about Rowan Atkinson. Um, well, Ro Rowan Atkinson, uh, he's well known. I mean, he's done tons of movies, but his well known character that he did uh, during, like, you know, on the BBC and whatever those little channels were over there in good Merry Old England was Mr. Bean. Yes. And that character dish. Uh, was just so loved and so amazing. And he didn't, the thing was, with that one character that he did, okay, um, was he didn't have to do, say anything, no words. It was just his actions alone. It was it was the, the harnessing of silent comedy again, I guess. It was yeah. the genius of, of Mr. Bean and the genius of, of Rowan Atkinson. Um, his, his his pantomime style, his facial expressions, he was like a throwback to Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin in, in a sense where you, you're reacting to his reactions and um, just the way he, he moved and, and reacted to things, uh, his expressions. And uh, it's amazing how much um, you could pull off with body language alone. So yeah, I think uh, <laughs> um, great pick, great pick off my right. radar. And it, like, uh, I, like I said, I just I totally went like we're gonna get out of Long Island. We're gonna we're gonna go take a. <laughs> we're not gonna take Eastern because they're not flying anywhere these days. But still, <laughs> um, that was like I said. I mean, I always I always found uh, his comedic style so so funny, and the fact that he just had to be just silent, and you, you didn't have to sit, you didn't have to say a word. Just the reaction alone was just enough to make me sit there and go like, wow, that's really funny shit. And I would actually pee my pants from just the pure innocence and stupidity of it. <laughs> Best to look as though your attention has been momentarily distracted. <laughs> but when your attention is there, it is vital to say how pretty she is looking straight away. But don't overdo it. It's like my life, Don. <laughs> it all comes full circle. It all, comes... all right. So now, <laughs> what's now your number three? Number three is uh, another New Yorker, Peekskill, New York. This uh, this is another iconic comedian um, who, again, you know, really, really created a lot of of uh, controversy at one point in his career. But here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Pee Wee Herman. <gasps> Paul Rubin. <laughs> Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman. He uh, he started doing this the character on stage uh, as this childlike um, kind of innocent character, but it had very dirty undertones. Uh, and then he finally got his <laughs> <laughs> he finally got his big break. Uh, in HBO, 1981, he had an HBO special. And that special is what launched him. And then he got his movie going in 1985, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, which uh, he became a juggernaut and a, a, a total iconic character where, um, you know, he, he crossed over into so many different things. He was the, the, he had children's shows, but yet adults 
loved them because of the adult on overtones. So just as many adults as children were watching his morning show. Mecca like a high, Mecca hiney ho. Now everyone at home, Mecca like a high, Mecca hiney ho. Mecca like a high, Mecca hiney ho. Mecca like a high, Mecca hiney ho. Because uh, it was everybody got a kick out. It was kind of reminiscent of Soupy Sales back in the day. It had a similar thing where it's like uh, had a, adult themed undertones, but it was a children's show. I'll tell you what I'm excited about. A little while ago, I was in the backyard, uh -huh. and all of a sudden I heard some singing. Uh -huh. and it wasn't like a normal voice. It was like a little voice. See, uh -huh. and I looked down, and there's a singing bug. Uh -huh. That's right, and playing a piano. Yeah. I brought him inside. Uh -huh. That's him. That's him. <laughs> Listen to him. Buggy sing something for Black Dude. Isn't that something? But anyway. I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You do a good peewee. I, I'm, I I'm like supposed to do that. <laughs> uh, and then I said controversial because in 1991, he got caught uh, masturbating in a porn theater. Yeah. And that... This is not the first time Rubens has had a run in with the law. According to police, Rubens was arrested in 1983 for loitering and prowling three blocks in the same Triple X South Trail Adult Theater. And when you are a character like Pee Wee Herman, um, and you you got children's shows and everything else, when something like that happens, get it on the screen. <laughs> when something like that happens, that kind of scandal, especially in that time, uh, it, it pretty much took his career apart, unfortunately. But I think that. The Pee Wee Herman character is still legendary, still iconic. Uh, every now and again, Paul Rubens will pull the suit out of his closet and put it on and, and do his thing and, you know, maybe do a little tequila dance or something. It's I, I, I saw an older video when he was doing stand up in like a uh, a small um a small uh, uh a venue and when he opened up with like uh hi everybody what's your name <laughs> i i was like wow that's that's actually kind of funny and smart at the same time because he's going to everyone at the same time um but yeah he, <laughs> like i said and then he also like what shocked me and I had no clue it, i it's like one of those parts where you sit there and you go how old were you when you found out that this this happened right and uh it was like several years later that i found out that paul rubin played um a character in buffy the vampire slayer yeah he, he, he was a vampire vampires. was he was a vampire yeah yeah and i was like oh, shh, that was that was him but once <laughs> again he he played the he played a comedic role and he he did well on it so i'm listen if if he like with him in the comedy grade a with him trying to finish behind somebody in movie theater, hey, listen, shit happens. <laughs> so that's a, that's not the way I want my popcorn buttered, man. <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> don't <right>. do we? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want <laughs> cheese on it. <laughs> oh, you got it curdled. Anyways, <laughs> right, who's your number three? Uh, my number two. Oh, we're on to number two. That's right. You're. It right. goes so fast on yeah, it. Yeah, really, we are. It's rocking. amazing on how, uh, and then and then the the movie magic happens. But um, uh, it, it Paul Rubin was my number two. Ah, very good. Yeah. So you were pulling for Pee Wee. And yeah, my number I, I, two, who, who doesn't pull for Pee Wee? No. <laughs> and yeah, is there anything you want to add about uh, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman? Um, like I said, I mean, just the fact that he was able to be only like pretty much that was that's what he was known for. He stood in that like nobody knows Paul Rubin for anything else, like how some of the other ones, like uh, Bob Nelson, he did characters. Um, and then you had Andrew Dice Clay, who once again just stood into a character, but he did stuff before. Paul Rubin, that's he he walked out 
and just continued. And that's, but once again, that's how everybody and anybody is going to know him for is Pee Wee Herman. Phew. Are you okay, Miss Yvonne? Oh, yes. Thank you, Pee Wee. Oh, and thank you, big fella. Oh. Yeah, and I think, too, the difference between Pee Wee and the other guys we talked about, whether it was in Larry the Cable Guy, Dice, um, is that Pee Wee was the most that you knew as an audience member. You knew that he wasn't real. You knew it was a character. Yes. Like, it was obvious, right? So, like, uh, but he still pulled it off, and he still made that persona work. And he still, nobody cares about Paul Rubens. They only want to talk to Pee Wee Herman. You know what I mean? Exactly. Most people that I uh, work with, uh, particularly people I write with, have always said like that they their favorite thing is Pee Wee angry or Pee Wee pissed off or um, <laughs> snarky Pee Wee. So I try, to, <laughs> I try to weave that in as hard as it is for me to be like that. <laughs> um. <laughs> um, my, my number two has also been said. It was Andrew Dice Clay. Okay. Um, I, I uh, like I said, Dice Clay is, is a true phenomenon of his time. And, uh, you know, and he got a lot of heat. Another controversial figure is on our front page. Is he Andrew Clay Silverstein, a nice guy from Brooklyn? Or the Diceman, a concert character who's offended just about everybody. I remember when SNL kind of canceled him early, like years ago. They wouldn't let him on the show. He got banned. He got banned from MTV. So he was, he was being canceled before the cancel culture was really in full gear. No, let me get this straight, and, and everybody watching and everybody in the studio should hear it. Andrew Clay is a guy that came out here about 10 years ago and broke his ass. Know what I mean? Broke his ass, he believed in himself, became the hottest comic in the world. And anybody that doesn't like it could wipe their ass with whatever they say about me. There's no way he would be able to do his act Absolutely. today, like fresh. Like if he was just coming up now, there's no way Dice Clay could ever come up now. He had to come up when he did in the 80s with, with that material. But I, what I like what Dice is doing now, he uh, he does a show where he's basically playing himself and, and it's unapologetic of who he was then. And it kind of plays off modern, the, today's time period and how he fits in. Maybe you forgot 89, the most famous comic to ever walk the planet Earth. Eddie Murphy? So I think it was kind of a brilliant move for Dice to kind of still stay relevant and still uh, do his thing. But um, now I'm just curious, did was it for health reasons or was it because of, um, you know, culture as far as where he used to always smoke a cigarette on stage and now he still goes on with the cigarette, just not lit. It's now it's turned into a prop. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious, is it because no smoking inside? No, you're not allowed. Meanwhile, my mother was giving birth to me and she was like, is he out yet? <laughs> I think that Dice, I believe he quit smoking for health reasons and um, just keeps it as a vice and also right. part of his act. It's, it, it's for his timing. Oh, right. you know, you know. Yeah. some guys, even with the cigar, if you look at some of the old dudes, it was always part of the timing. Like with George Burns, that was your cue to laugh. If you're the audience was when he took a puff. That's that right. means the joke's over. Time to laugh. Now, when they when they when they make a picture, the minute they want somebody that drinks, they hire Dean Martin. <laughs> and he's a smash in all these pictures. Now he takes about forty or fifty drinks a day, not because he likes it; he wants to stay warmed up. If the right part comes along, he's ready. <laughs> I saw him last night, and boy, was he ready. But the only thing is that he continued smoking until he was a hundred. Yeah, that was his yeah. Day. He's like, what? What's cancer? Nothing. It dice so wuss. <laughs> Those cheap Marlboros. <laughs> so now it's time for the number one, Jeff Bosey. Who's your number one character comedian? You ready for this one? Okay. You're going to sit there and go like, wow, I didn't see this one coming. Uh, Foster Brooks. Wow. 
Good job. That's an yeah. only but a goodie. He, he always yes. played a, uh, an alcoholic. <laughs> you know, you know who I am? No, I don't. Would you mind asking around? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I, like I said, I, I used to always watch the old uh, Dean Martin shows. Yeah. Um, and uh, just the fact that he, because it was the character that he played and what was so, um, uh, where I admired his, the, the acting skills and the dedication to that character. I mean, he made, he made everybody laugh, like no matter what. I mean, he could stand in the dais, he could be doing the Dean Martin show and no matter what, they couldn't hold in the laughter because he played the character so well. I was in that. No. I was the one with the SO roadmap. Um, but I like there was one uh, there's one scene where he does uh, one of his characters and uh, he's well, he's the drunk, but uh, the stories of where he's like, um, he's like, uh, what uh, Dean Martin would go like, so what so what do you do for a living? I, I, I'm an airline pilot. <laughs> yeah. I just dropped in for a little drink to settle my nerves before I go to work. Work. <laughs> what, what, what sort of work do you do? I'm an airline pilot. But after he did the entire set, whatever whatever it was that he did, he you see him, he's at the back door where his exit was off stage, and he would turn around and he, like, a sobered up bow, thank you. Right, for, right. Uh, for appreciating, and then I just got done entertaining you. So it was just, it was so amazing and so funny, uh, you know. It was definitely a, a brilliant, a brilliant take on it, uh, and a great character. And, and kudos to, to uh, remembering good old uh, Foster Brooks. He's he's been around in like the fifties and sixties. I think more sixties and seventies too. He was like you say, he was on a lot of those roasts. He used to be on like Johnny Carson and all those old shows back in the day growing up. And he always played a, a drunk. Who'd be, hey, everybody, how you doing? And um, I remember asking one time. I had a show years ago on WSB, and, and um, we had Peter Bales called in, and I was talking to him about comedy. And I asked him about why does a guy like Foster Brooks playing a dr playing a drunk is so funny, but then real people who are drunk are such idiots and <laughs> so annoying. And he was like, it's because of the control. Yes. Because he's not really drunk, he's in full control, and he's, and he has these punchlines laid out that are just so brilliant. Like you just said, a great one. He's like, you know, what do you do for a living? I'm an airline pilot. Yeah. Kid. You know, so it's just that take on it, and, and all that made him made him brilliant. <laughs> they call it the greatest show on earth. I think it's now the, the they call it the darn dingling and barn banging brother circus. <laughs> and and. Uh, I'm glad you brought him up because he's not a guy that's in a lot of the conversation when you talk about great comedians. No, and the weird part is I can go up to uh, a lot of the uh, comedians that I that I, I know on Long Island. Uh, I would say about, I could go up to about 80% of them and mention and drop Foster Brooks and go, who's that? Yeah, they're not going to know. And I'm like, wow, you, you have you're missing a lot and uh i'm so sorry there's a pill for it <laughs> you you need to forget your troubles and i know you come with, with me tonight and we'll go someplace to make it make you forget well, where, where are we going <laughs> to a weenie room. what's your number what's it what What's what what's your number one, John? <laughs> My number one is back to Long Island. This guy's from Babylon, New York, and it's the one and only Rodney Dangerfield. Mm. You know, now, I would I listen, I I I was gonna he, he he didn't make he listen, he was number seven on my list, but <laughs> once again, I love I love Rodney. Rodney to me, uh, you know, he, his real name's Jacob Cohen, and then he changed his name uh, to Jack Roy, and uh, when he became a comedy writer, and then from Jack Roy became Rodney Dangerfield, uh, and and that's when he really hit his stride. So, like a lot of people know the story with with Rodney. He first performed as Jacob Cohen, didn't really get anywhere. He was, you know, 
probably like a middle act type of guy. And then he he uh, retired because he had a family and he had to go into aluminum siding business and sell aluminum siding. And then he would write jokes on the side. That's when he came up with the with the moniker Jack Roy. Of the aluminum siding, he'd be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'm sorry about your house. <laughs> I tell you, I'm all right now, but last week I was in rough shape, you know? <laughs> uh, last week I was my doctor. I told him, doctor, every day I wake up, I look in the mirror, I want to throw up. What's wrong with me? He said, I don't know, but your eyesight is perfect. Basically, when he did, uh, he had a resurgence and he, he went off this character. Um, and I think he was named Rodney Dangerfield. I, I forget the, how the story goes, but but somebody else announced him that way because he said, "What's your name?" He goes, "I don't know what I want, what name I want to use yet." So they're like, "All right, Rodney Dangerfield," and it came out, and uh, he killed. He started doing this no respect thing. He was this down on his luck guy, the self depreciative uh, humor, and uh, you know this guy gets no respect. I get no respect. I got to tell you, I mean that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't get no respect at all. It, that, that character led him to super, super stardom, icon level, legendary level. One of the greats of all time uh, is Rodney Dangerfield. And if he had succeeded with Jacob Cohen, we may have never have had Rodney Dangerfield. So sometimes wow. failure is your best friend. Uh, listen, I'm still waiting for it to find that friend, John. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's none bigger, really, than Rodney. Uh, he had a club that he had his club in the city. Yeah. It's not longer there, but you know, I mean. And they're trying to get that statue made still in in uh, in, in Babylon, Babylon, right? Babylon Village, where he's from. Yeah. So we're still working on getting that done as well. But um, now Only it's 3, time. Three thousand more signatures to go. <laughs> Bosi, it is now time to condense our ten picks down to five. Oh so, boy. So. Um, so far, we know that Pee Wee Herman and Andrew yes. Dice Clay have made it. Yes, so, because they turned into the napkin children. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we both, we both have uh, chosen them in our the original top fives. They automatically get fast tracked, so they are in. So they are uh, right there. So now we have to pick from is uh, Bob Nelson, Andy Kaufman, Larry the Cable Guy, Rowan Atkinson, Rodney Dangerfield, and Forster Brooks. Mm. So. Out of this God. list, who, who who gets moved forward first? Do you think is uh, do we do we move up? Um, I say, I th I think we have a good argument for Larry the Cable Guy, and um, and Forster Brooks right now to, to move ahead. Um, he was your number one. I think you know. I think he can get put on. I think Forster Brooks and and Larry the Cable Guy both. Is, I, I, I think because like Larry the Cable Guy like and you can say the same thing for Dice I mean these guys started out they but now do they continue do they continue with it yeah you know, I, I mean, when Dice does his shows to this day he's yeah. like 64 years old and yeah. he still gets up there he's oh doing the cigarette doing yeah. the whole thing and the rhymes and I think oh, the I don't, same listen I, I listen he could be still like if he makes it to 80 I'm pretty sure he's going to go something to like, hey, nurse, suck me off. Uh, he'll, say, he'll say something rude. I, I don't think there's an ounce of what, when he was like, how he was like, like, like how they're, let's say, let's say for shits and giggles, we all know Jeff Bosey. Well, some of us do. But either way, you know, and then I turn it to something else. Do I remember the goofiness and how I was beforehand and I become this person and that's it for the rest of my life? Who knows? We only know. <laughs> We only know uh, Mr. Uh, Clay, yeah, however he wants to be called. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, at certain points, I don't care. No. Uh, <laughs> once I don't care if it happens, if he lives, he lives. He dies, he dies. If he dies, uh, he dies. Uh, I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking so far. Okay, go I, ahead. I have for five Pee Wee, for four Clay, uh, for two Larry the Cable Guy, for three. Oh, no. Hold on. Five of Pee Wee, four Dice Clay, right. three Larry the Cable Guy, two Forster Brooks, and number one Rodney. And that that will take out Bob Nelson, Andy Kaufman, and Rowan Atkinson. So, what do you think about that? Um, 
It sounds like a great list. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. What was... <laughs> We're going to bring it back to where I'm like dumb like always. And I told you, failure. Wait, what was, <laughs> what, 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 what was those favorite names again? All right, so here's my list so far. I got Get five. list. Well, five and four, we know are ours. So it's five is right. Kiwi, four is Clay. Right. Then three is Larry the Cable Guy. Two, Foster Brooks. And number one, Rodney. Okay, well, either way, I think as much as I have, you know, my list, um, I, I I would have to say we got to keep Rodney in because, once again, he's – he, he's definitely a staple. So, uh, Ronnie, I mean, I, 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 he's actually, once again, he was one of my uh, top ten. Right. So, uh, I, I mean, I have to agree with, with Ronnie Dangerfield. I mean, he, he's he's just absolutely amazing as far as uh, comedic stand-up and actor. I mean, he was just, uh, I, I, I love him. And everyone tries to be like him and do, do impressions of him. So, he's got to stay. Ronnie has to stay. I don't care. Ronnie stays with between you and I. Wants it with me too? No. Um, <laughs> yes, Rodney has to stay. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I'm gonna have to agree with you. As much as I, once I don't want to agree, done. I don't want to. <laughs> so you agree? Forever. All right. So here, here's the list, man. Here's the final list. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. We got at number five, Pee Wee Herman. Number four, Andrew Dice Clay. At number three, Larry the Cable Guy. At number two, Foster Brooks. And the number one character comedian of all time, Rodney Dangerfield. Dude, that's a solid list, my friend. Oh, I felt like I just gave birth. Once I can do the delivery. I'm sorry. I can't help but to keep doing that. <laughs> you rock, Jeff Bosey. Tell everybody where they could see you and Professor Vidora. Oh, well, uh, where you could see Jeff Bosey is you can find me. I actually found that way of like getting an Instagram. I did that, one of those things. So uh, comedian Jeff Bosey on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook, of course. Um, and the only way you can find Professor Fedora is only uh, uh, solely on Don Sills. Uh, it's Pasusu. <laughs> <laughs> Bosey, you rock, my friend. Professor Fedora, you rock as well. Thank you so much. I love you, Don. You do an awesome job. And all the, listen, the top fives that you do out of this world. Everybody should go ahead and watch these vids because they are amazing and very informative. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the top five character comedians that me and Jeff Bosey came up with. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know your top five character comedians in the comments below. Let us know if we missed anybody or if you didn't like one of our choices. Whatever you have to say, let us know in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>